Das Mann, Vishwani Deva, Vayunani Vipa, Yuyodas Majjuran Deno, Bunish Tante Nama Uktim Videma, Agni Naya Supataga Ye Asman, Vishwani Deva, Vayunani Vipa. Transforming One's Pride There once was a merchant named Chand. Chand was rich, cheap, and very proud. His wife, Anuradha, was extremely devoted and worked very hard. Oh! Chan had six sons who all worked in their father's business. Chan had six boats to carry his merchandise from town to town along the river. Chan was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. And every day he used to pray. Lead me from the unreal to the real. Lead me from darkness to light. Lead me from death to immortality. He prayed for weeks. Lead me from the unreal to the real. <clears throat> Lead me from darkness to light. Lead me from death to immortality. He prayed for months. Lead me from the unreal to the real. Lead me from darkness to light. Lead me from death to immortality. 
He prayed for years. Lead me from the unreal to the real. Lead me from darkness to light. Lead me from death to immortality. And then he saw Shiva. I give you the boon of immortality. But if you allow earthly temptations to enter into you, you will become mortal again. Daughter, you look beautiful. How is it that you 
My mother can share my happiness. But my father... Your father did consent to this marriage. Yes. But no, he won't even speak to me. Never mind him. He didn't even come to the ceremony. He's jealous of my husband. Is there something wrong, mother? Just promise me you will always believe in yourself. Always. Now I must leave you. Your new husband awaits. May we be fearless of those we know not, and of those we know. I can't believe how lucky I am. I never imagined your father would allow you to marry me. At first he said, Impossible. I will not allow you to marry a Hindu. But you protested in the strongest terms. I said no. You must allow me to marry him, because love is love. I admire him, and I love him. I must have him. What could her father do? His daughter's happiness is dear to his heart. So he sent a messenger to this Hindu king, seeking his views on the matter. As it happened, this Hindu king also loved this Muslim princess. And so he replied, if she loves me, and I love her, then I do not see any reason why we cannot be married. Look, there's a special star in the sky called Arundhati. She shines most beautifully beside Vashista, and she was Vashista's wife. Arundhati was very learned and spiritual. In the Mahabharata, it is said that if one can become virtuous and totally devoted to her husband, like Arundhati, then she can easily go to heaven. And there she will be worshipped. But I cannot see it. <laughs> well then, it is also said that if one cannot see Arundhati in the sky, then they will lead a very short life. <laughs> Gandhi. 
around us. You are immature and unadvanced in the spiritual life. for bringing the Vedic philosophies to the West. Cancer, I am on a pilgrimage and I have a tremendous desire to smoke. So would you give me your pipe? Alas, I 
was caught by my father. What are you doing, Bela? He shouted. I was just examining the smoking boats, I said. I thought that the one for the Brahmins would be better than the one for the Kshatriyas because Brahmins are so great. And the Muslims, Muslims are so heroic and spirited. I thought that their pipe would be special, but they were all the same. My parents were simply shocked. How is it that you've been smoking at such a tender age, my mother says? My son, you are too spoiled, you are too smart. And she sent me upstairs to my room. Oh, God. In two hours' time, the maid comes, running, screaming. Be there! He's throwing away all his clothes. Everything that he has in his room, he's throwing out the window. And there were a few beggars below who were grabbing my garments as they fell. And I, I was so happy. My mother runs upstairs and demands, what is the matter with you, Bile? Why are you throwing away such expensive clothes? I replied, mother, we are rich. We are so rich, we can have whatever we want, whenever we want. But these are poor people. And they have nothing, nothing. If we do not give to the men who will give, we have enough. We have more than enough. My heart wants to give these things away. They need them more than we do. Her heart was full of joy. She embraced me. She had tears of delight. What am I doing? What have I done? Wherever there is a human being, there also is Lord Shiva. This is what Ramakrishna has taught me. Each human being embodies God. This is what he has said. So why did I not share that man's pipe? I have given up everything. I am a sannyasi, so I am one with the rest of the world by virtue of my renunciation. Yet although I have renounced everything, still I have preserved this sense of discrimination. Here is a copper, there is a scavenger, here is a brahmin, there is a soldier, low caste, high caste. How can I have the heart to distinguish? Are they not all God's children? This sense of separativity, superiority and inferiority, how can I have that kind of feeling? Kind sir, please. Give me your pipe. Each man is God himself. I'm divinely happy, supremely happy, for two reasons. First, my human desire is fulfilled, I am able to smoke. And my divine desire is fulfilled. Because I have been able to realize my inner vision of universal oneness. My supreme Lord abides in all. I've been able to realize my inner vision from sharing your pipe. Get this villain! How dare he place his feet on Lord Shiva! Lord Shiva is one of our trinity. Deliberately, he is insulting me because he knows that I am a Hindu. I will never become your disciple. My boy! <laughs> I have not come into your life to confuse you. I know what you are thinking. Now do me a favor. 
Remove the statue of your Lord Shiva. <laughs> Place it wherever you want to. Type of 
pride cannot be tolerated. I curse you. You will lose all your children and all your possessions. And I will make you mortal once again. In this way you will be humbled, and I will force you to bow down before me and worship me. temptation has entered into you. I am taking away the boon Lord Shiva has given you. Now you are mortal once again and can easily be killed by me or any human being. In the course of time I shall fulfill the rest of my In the course of time, Menasha fulfilled the rest of her curse. A few months later, three of Chan's sons went sailing on three of his boats to a distant city when the boats mysteriously capsized and sank. Chan's three sons died with all crew members. That was the first serious misfortune. A few months later, Chan himself went sailing on his remaining three boats with his remaining three sons. This time, there was a ferocious hurricane. In this terrible storm, Chan's remaining three boats sank, his remaining three sons drowned, and he lost all his wealth. Like Chan himself was about to drown, the gods were not the thought. If he dies now, he will not be able to worship me. I want him to worship me. I must save him. Then she caused a giant lotus to appear right before Chan. As soon as Chan touched the lotus plant, he thought of the goddess Menasha, because Menasha's other name is Lotus. But Chan was too angry to take any help from her at all. He said, Menasha is the cause of my suffering. I will not take help even from a lotus plant. <laughs> but the goddess had already been able to give him enough strength through the lotus, and with greatest difficulty he reached the shore. For three days Chan wandered, so weak he could hardly walk. Finally, on the third day a stranger gave him some food. took Chan several months to return home, and he was unaware that in his absence his wife had given birth to their seventh son. Thank goddess that she will not cause any more suffering for us. 
I cannot do that. For months I have walked on foot trying to get home, going for days without food. I have lost six sons and everything that I own, the only thing that I have left is my pride. I will not give that to her. I cannot bear to lose another son. Our son, don't you see this must mean that the curse is removed? Otherwise, how could we have a son? I give you the name Lakshminda, one who was blessed by the goddess of prosperity. Be careful what you pray for. There was once a king whom no one liked and everyone feared. His name was Viksha. There are many ways to conquer people. Weapons, or deception, or by other means. But I want to conquer in a different way. I want to conquer by touch. Whomever I want to kill, I will touch that person's head, and immediately they will die. Shiva. Among the cosmic gods, I know that Shiva is easy to please. I will pray to Shiva. to the moon, and also the first star visible to the moon. Many of the other stars were jealous because of Ashwini's tremendous beauty, and because of the moon's special fondness for her. One day the moon came to all his wives and said, for two reasons I have a special fondness for Ashwini. First, she came into my life long before any of you. 
second. Because Ashwini's beauty pleases me most. Everyone has a special beauty, but Ashwini's beauty gives me the most joy. For these two reasons, she has become closest to me. Ashwini replied, My lord, I am beautiful. I am close to you. I came first to you not because I deserve to, but because your compassion has allowed me to. Please excuse the interruption, your highness, but we are under attack. Under attack? The west bank of the city is in flames. By whom? Your father. My father? Fear of darkness is fear of the unknown. Fear of light is fear of the known. Fear of the unknown is stupidity. Fear of the known is absurdity. <laughs> My daughter was furious with her father for attacking her husband's kingdom. She even fought in a battle against her father's army. But the soldiers laughed at her.
because she was so weak. But she was determined. Her father had captured her husband, was torturing him. Only on one condition shall I allow you to keep your kingdom. Give me back my daughter. I love your daughter, and your daughter loves me. <clears throat> I do not care if you love her or not. You are Hindu. If you do not divorce her, I shall kill you. At least let me speak to her. You may never see her again. My dear wife, if I do not divorce you, your father will kill me. I am divorcing you and returning you to your father. You go back to your kingdom and let me come back to my kingdom. All I want to do is rule peacefully. Is this a Hindu heart? I love the Hindu heart. And against my father's will I married you. I gave my all to you. I sacrificed everything for you now. Now you have divorced me. And I, I'm fighting to bring you back. I love my husband so dearly. But he loves his kingdom more than he loves me. His kingdom is more precious to him than my life's own sacrifice. You. You will get your kingdom back. But my father, my father will not get his daughter back. Dear ones always remain dear. There is no Hindu, there is no Muslim. There is only oneness. John's son, Lakshmandar, has attained maturity. Chan has found a most beautiful bride for him, Behula.
Drop by drop. Emptying the sea? What on earth for? Oh, this is she. My wife and I were going on a voyage when she made some ends by the shore. Oh, oh right over there, in the sand. So, so, so I, I went to the sea and I asked him whether or not he would look after our eggs while we were away. Fine, he said. But I warned him. Oh, that he did. <laughs> I, I said to the sea, I said, if on our return we do not find our eggs, and then we shall empty you. Completely. Needless to say, that the sea... The sea is very bad. He did not keep his promise to look after our eggs. And so we are punishing the sea. Punishing the sea? Yes, we are emptying the sea. Drop by drop. Indeed. That is a noble task. I shall help. Shtirea 
angesh tushtu vagam sastano vidhi vyashe madeva kitam yadayo ho Lakshmina, you know it's a sin to sleep during the day. Why are you sleeping? Ah, Lakshmina, why are you sleeping? Asatoma Satgamaya. Asatoma Satgamaya. dies from a snake bite, then they cannot be cremated. Their body must be cast into the river or placed upon a raft for the river to take it wherever it will. Mother, I am not going to allow him to be thrown into the river. He is dead, true, but I cannot leave him. I don't need anybody but my beloved husband. Oh Lord Shiva, my father-in-law has worshipped you so devotedly for years and years. Can you not do anything for his son? Will this be his fate? Menasha, can you not hear her soulful tears? I hear them. Is there nothing you can do? I am ready to give back Chand all his sons, all his possessions, everything that he has lost. On one condition, he must worship me once. Only once? Only once. I shall grant you your boon. Behula, go and beg your father-in-law to worship the goddess Manasha. Only once, then all will be restored. Father, you are unbearably proud. That is why this has happened. You only wanted to worship Shiva, not the goddess Manasha. Please, can you not worship her just once? Then you'll get back all your sons, your ships, your wealth, everything. Can you not worship her just once? No, I will never surrender. Have you no affection for your dear one, for your children, for your wife? <coughs> I did love my dear ones. I loved all my sons. Then where is your affection gone? It still remains. But now some competition is going on between affection and pride. Your pride is won. <coughs> you did care as much for the members of your own family. As you cared for your pride. Otherwise you would have surrendered to the snake goddess long ago. And worshipped her to save your son. The 
in surrender to affection. Let affection win. I will worship Manas. What are you doing? You promised you would worship me. It was clearly understood you would worship me with your right hand, not with your left hand. Both hands are not necessary, but you must worship me with your right hand. I use my right hand to pray to Lord Shiva, so how can I use my right hand to pray to you? I am devotedly worshipping you with my left hand. I promised that I would worship you once, but I did not say I would use my right hand. All of Chan's sons and all his possessions were restored. And Lord Shiva was once again protecting him. Minash, you are sad. His pride was not completely transformed. Menasha, the transformation of human nature progresses at the speed of a tortoise. went on for days and weeks emptying the sea. When one day Garuda, the conveyor of Lord Vishnu, king of the birds, came and saw What are you doing? Oh, your majesty, can't you see? We are Emptying the sea. Well, the sea has lost their eggs, and so we are emptying the sea. You? How can you empty the sea? The sea is very vast. It is infinite. We have determination and perseverance. Hmm. Let me ask Lord Vishnu. If your eggs are still in good condition, then Vishnu will be able to find them. But if they are broken, there is nothing Vishnu can do. Oh, Lord Vishnu, if you really care for fools, then you will help these partridges. No, they are not fools. They are showing the spirit of patience and perseverance. This is how human beings must try to empty the ignorant sea, drop by drop. It is what the seekers must and should do. Ignorant sea is very vast. If sincere seekers want to replace it with knowledge light, then they have to do it the same way, drop by drop. I am commanding the sea 
to return the eggs. to the truth 